Back at it again. How to release music more affordably. Forgot to add this part, but if, for those that don't know me, my name is Nick. I'm an independent artist with give or take 4 million monthly listeners on Spotify. And I just like to share my thoughts on growing as an artist. Hope you like the video. In general, I just think a lot of artists pay too much to get songs out. Whether that be paying too much for an instrumental, paying too much for mixing and mastering, giving up too much of a percent on the master side, the, the streaming revenue side to whoever. By far the cheapest way to release would be to own the means of production, right? So you record yourself at home, you have a MacBook uh, or just a computer, a DAW, an interface and a microphone. Record yourself at home. And obviously the cheapest cheapest would be to mix and master yourself, produce for yourself, and that's all just skill stacking, right? Me personally, I don't produce for myself um, in the grand scheme of things. I don't mix and master. I record myself. Um, but I'm still able to release very affordably. And I think like a practical tip would be just to use like roy royalty-free loop uh, services like Splice or Waves. I use Splice a ton. Here's a real world scenario. I made a song called Good Enough on a splice loop and I didn't put any drums on or anything. I just looped the splice. It was a guitar. I looped the splice loop for however long the song was, three minutes. And I just recorded vocals over that and released it. And that song I released years ago. It's not one of my best performing songs, but over the years it's done 200,000 give or take 200,000 200, streams on it. So that song that cost me zero dollars for the beat because I, well, I get nine dollars a month or whatever splice costs. And then fifty dollars for the mix and master. Uh, I was able to re release the song and it did over 200,000 streams to as of today. And that's, you know, just under, it's probably like 750 bucks. Uh, so in my mind, that's a great investment, right? A song that you released or that I was able to release for under $60 uh, has made me 750 bucks. So I made $700 profit off of a song. And I know you probably heard that and said, where can I get $50 mix and master? So for me, obviously I was just reaching out to people and say, hey, what do you charge? Blah, blah, blah. And obviously some people will be charging a ton of money. Some people will be charging thousands of dollars for mixes and masters. Um, some people would charge $300, $500. But there's people out there who are willing to work with you. So if you just reach out to a bunch of people and say, you could even start with, hey, my budget's 50 bucks for a mix. Can you work with it? Um, most people probably say no, but you will find someone who is willing to, someone who's building their career currently, who wants your business. And you're not, you know, dev devaluing or undervaluing the producer's time, or sorry, the, the engineer's time, if they agree to it. That means that they're okay with it. And one thing that I did to, to in order to like, kind of make it worth my engineer's time was I prepped my songs really well. So that means I prepped my vocals well. I consolidated my vocals into less vocal tracks. You know, I'm not sending nine, ten vocal tracks over, twenty vocal tracks over. I'm sending two, three, four vocal tracks, um, making it really easy for the engineer to work with. I wasn't sending beat stems. I was sending an MP3 of the beat, MP3 of the beat with two, three vocal tracks, and you have an engineer who, you know, knows what they're doing. They can fly through that. And then one other thing that I was doing was I was giving them a lot of work. So some months I would give them 15, 20 songs to mix, 10 songs to mix. Then, you know, it doesn't matter. So if, if the engineer knows that you're going to be coming back frequently and my engineer um, created a vocal preset for my vocal and for uh, the way that I was consistently delivering them the vocal. So the vocal always sound the same from my end. They can, for the most part, just apply the preset, and that's, you know, 80% of the work is done right there. 
immediately. Preset on, 80% of their job's done. So if you're an engineer and you're able to mix songs in 20 minutes, mix and master done, 20, 30 minutes, you're more willing to take 50 bucks, especially if you know that you're going to be getting 10 mixes a month, 15 mixes a month. And, and it allowed me to create faster because I wasn't having to uh, learn mixing and mastering and engineering. So I was able to create much faster, which was enabling me to release much faster, um, etc. I'm going to change locations for the producer talk or like the, how to get beats for less. This autofocus better not mess with me, man. As far as the producer goes, there's also producers that are willing to work with you for less. Um, there's producers who are just starting their career. There's, I mean, one, one thing that I was doing early on was I was waiting for people to post beat sales and I would just buy a ton of beats. So, for example, somebody would post Black Friday beat sale on my SoundCloud exclusive beats, 75 bucks a beat. Right. And then I would hit up the same producer and be like, hey, would you bundle, you know, 10 beats for 500 bucks? And, you know, that's 50 bucks a beat. So instead of 75 bucks a beat, now I'm getting them 50 bucks a beat exclusively. I got 10 beats for 500 bucks. And I record on those and I own them 100 percent. So when I release them, I'm getting 100 percent of the master back to me. So at that time, you know, I got a $50 beat, I got a $50 mix and master, I'm releasing songs for a hundred bucks. And, and that was the way I was doing it for a long time. Until obviously, I, you know, you get into a rhythm with a producer and so, you know, right now I currently, I give a split of the master uh, because uh, I built a relationship, a friendship with my producer. Um, and I, Obviously, producers always should get their publishing and, and get their whatever, but people, like different producers, run their businesses differently. Different artists run their businesses differently. So I was always looking to purchase my instrumentals exclusively so that I would own 100%. Um, so that's like some... And then, uh, and then if you... like, the, Obviously, the cheapest way to release on a budget for your production side would be to use places like a splice you find a loop you like and then you can write a song on it and you can find a you can find a you can like a loop a guitar loop you find a guitar loop and let's say it's 100 bpm beats per minute and then you go in and you type drum loop and you put exact bpm 100 bpm you can find drum loops that plug right into that fit perfectly with your guitar loop you can technically create like that, right? Obviously, a better product, a better song, is going to come by using someone who knows more about producing and knows what they're doing, and if you don't feel like spending the time to learn it. For me, it was always about how fast can I create this? You know, how or how efficient can I make this process? How efficiently can I get my songs mixed and mastered? How efficiently can I get a song from uh, from idea, conception, whatever, to product and release, or at least put in a folder where it's available for me to release if I want to. Damn, I don't know if I ever hit record. Nah, I did, we good, baby, shit. <laughs> and then obviously distributors, right? Like a distro kid, that's probably your cheapest distributor. Your most affordable one. I mean, if you're thinking like equipment, right? Like maybe you don't have the funds currently to purchase, to be able to record at home or Whatever, your phone is enough, like your iPhone is enough. And I know you're thinking, like, shut up, Nick. <laughs> but for real, there's an artist, Paul Russell. Paul Russell, who currently has a, like a I think his song's on Billboard or something. Like it's charting on Billboard. Um, I've made a few songs with him in the past. Um, great guy. His song is Lil Boo Thing. Uh, I forget how it goes, man. Dang. Yeah, I forget how it goes. Anyway, his early stuff, he was recording everything into his phone. His microphone was his phone microphone. He, I think he was just recording right into voice memos. And he would send that as his vocal for mix. And you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. I've actually wanted to kind of test that. Pablo actually asked me, to, my, my engineer asked me to test that 
worth a song as well to, to record something on my phone and send it to them and get it mixed and release it and no one would know the difference. I think people just overthink equipment often. You know, the best, uh, the best equipment you have is what's available to you. I'm still recording on uh, SM7B, a Focusrite Scarlet, and, you know, my MacBook. Very cheap setup considering all the options that are available. But I like it because it's easy, it's portable, it's tried and true, it works, there's no headache, you know? It's just something that I'm used to and I can create easier. I want my process to be easy. I don't like headaches in my setup process, in my recording process. I don't like head headaches in any part of the process. So anything that can remove a headache for me is, uh, is a win in my book. I guess a recap would be set your budget. Just make sure you're setting a budget for your releases, kind of in a way, like obviously at the very beginning, you won't be able to do this if you don't have listeners. But a general rule of thumb that I always used was, like if I'm releasing a song for uh, 150 bucks, right, I can get a song out for 150 bucks. How many streams do I need on that song in order to break even? And I want to keep my upfront cost so low that my ROI is just incredible. My return on my investment. So once I've paid off what it cost me to release this song, the rest is profit. So for example, 150 bucks, man, I guess I'll just do the math. It's not going to be exact, but I'm just trying to see how many streams you need to make 150 bucks. It's about 40,000 streams, I think. About 40 or 50,000 streams, you can make your 150 bucks back. So if you keep that in mind, it costs me $150 to release this song. I need 50,000 streams to break even. And then everything after I get 50,000 streams, I'm making money on this investment. That was always how I was approaching it. I wanted my upfront cost to be a realistic amount for something I could make back. And then obviously make money on moving forward. But at least break even, right? So I wasn't in the negative. But if you're just starting, you're obviously going to be in the negative for a while. That's just the name of the game. You have to be willing to uh, take a loss for a while before you start seeing, you know, it's just like any business. You know, you invest, if you start any business, you're going to be in the hole on the day of opening. You know, you open a brick and mortar, you're going to be in the hole. You're going to be in debt the day of opening because you invested in the, you know, the equipment, you invested in the employees, you whatever. It doesn't take a lot of money. Like as a musician, our overhead is so low. It can be so low compared to other businesses. Um, and paying more for a mix doesn't necessarily mean a better mix. Paying more for a beat doesn't necessarily mean a better beat. You can get great quality stuff for an affordable price. And like I said, it's, you just take care of the people who are taking care of you. So as I was making more money, getting more streams, I started paying my producer more, my engineer more. No, no, no. I think uh, I think a lot of people overthink the process. They think more expensive means better, and that's not necessarily the case. You can uh, create great things on a budget, little to no money. Yeah, I think that's that's, that's pretty much it for creating and releasing music on a budget, or at least more affordably. And as always, uh, I wrote a book. If you care to read it, it's here. I'll put the link in the description. Thank you for watching. Yeah, much love. Talk soon.